Hey everyone, this is Charlie and you're watching The Burrow. One of my goals for this year was to read a larger number of books by a more varied group of authors. Right? Um, like many people who look like me, a lot of the books I end up reading are by white dudes. Uh, that may just be because uh, the genre I tend to read is fantasy and science fiction and things like that. But anyway, um, I wanted to read books written by more women, by more people of color in hopes of uh, gaining some ideas, gaining some perspectives. And it's to the end that I picked up Lisa C's um, book called China Dolls. Now, I'm going to do my best to keep this review spoiler free for the sake of anybody who is a fan of Lisa C and hasn't read this book yet. Um, but maybe something will pop out accidentally, so I apologize for that in advance. Now the narrative style of this book is really interesting. I like the fact that there are three main characters that the story sort of switches between from chapter to chapter. And basically the main story focuses on this community of Chinese or Chinese Americans in the in California state uh, just before the breakout of World War II. Uh, the main character, Grace, comes from the Midwest, I don't remember where exactly, but she comes from like a, a Chinese American family. and she doesn't really have any idea about like her traditional heritage kind of thing even though both of her parents are chinese immigrants on the other hand you have this this other character who's sort of like grace's mirror whose name is helen and she lives in chinatown in san francisco and so this character is steeped in these traditions she believes in them she's she's used to all the cultural rules and things like for example having her brother pick her up and chauffeur her around, her having to do things so that she doesn't upset the, the honor of the family and things like that. So she's this very traditional kind of character. And then this third character, whose name is Ruby, is sort of, mm, she's kind of like a mix because she has these really traditional roots um, in, in, her, in her Asian background, but she's also very Americanized in, in the way she dates and the way she talks and the things she does. And what brings all these girls together is Grace comes to California, she bumps into Helen who helps her find their way to uh, these auditions. Grace wants to, be, wants to be a professional dancer out in California, and that's where they meet Ruby, because Ruby's going up for the same kind of job. And so without giving too much of it away, what's really, really interesting about this is that it's this examination of what it meant to be um, Asian American, particularly Chinese American, um, back in the 1940s and 1930s, as I said, just before the breakout of World War II, just before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, I should say, more specifically. And to sort of get an impression of things that I never really knew about. Um, for example, I never knew that it was actually illegal for Chinese and uh, ca Caucasians to marry in California and many other places in the United States back during that time. And that's something that ex that's explored is that there's this idea that sure Chinese may be in the country and helping the economy and doing everything else that Americans do and, and for all intents and purposes they are, um, they are American citizens but they're still treated like the other. Um, they're still not given the same rights and, and everything else like that. And I was disturbed to find out that this wasn't just an, like a, an invention of the story, that in fact these things were these things were really true. And what ends up happening, of course, after the attack on Pearl Harbor is it sort of changes the dynamic from this sort of this sort of passive distrust almost, passive distrust and slightly a mix of active and passive aggression towards uh, Asians and Asian Americans living in the country to this sort of, you know, all the witch hunt things that happened following the attack in Pearl Harbor, the internment of Japanese Americans, for example. And so it's about how these girls live and follow their dreams and and either do or don't follow tradition and, and, and become something more than they thought they could be. Or sometimes maybe maybe less than, than they hoped they would be. So <clears throat> without giving too much away, that is that is the main idea of the story. I think it really, really drew me in after maybe like the second chapter, I, I was I was pretty hooked and I thought it was an interesting story. It was something fresh and something different that I had never really read much about. Now that being said, I was a little bit skeptical uh, when reading this because the character I mentioned of Helen, who has this very traditional background, she is constantly quoting like these Chinese proverbs and I was like... It, it, it got to the point where it was almost kind of like, it seemed like a parody, um, or or like 
the writer Lisa C was just pulling like fortune cookie quotes out and just peppering them through the story to sort of somehow add like this Asian-ness to the story and and it really actually bothered me at first and <clears throat> um, later on I got used to it because it didn't seem so heavy-handed and it seemed to be more of the character and it seemed to fit but that said I was still a little disturbed because um, it, it seemed it seemed almost like something like somebody like me would write if, if I had like a a really stereotypical perspective on like Chinese Americans or Chinese culture and, and thinking that you know that Chinese people are always girl going around like quoting Confucius or whatever that's what it felt like to me but uh, looking into it a little bit um, Lisa C although she doesn't look at it as actually um, she's she's Asian American she's of Asian descent and it turns out that a lot of these things that happen in this book and a lot of things that were talked about like um, like the uh, the legalization, for example, of the marriage between Chinese and Caucasians, her great grandfather had had gone through when he moved over to to the United States, and so that sort of put me at ease about that. And I guess it added like an air of authenticity to it because she had this background, she grew up in Chinatown and all these other things. So I didn't feel quite so bad about it and in fact as I said it added an air of authenticity. Now as far as how the story reads she does a really really good job of developing her characters. I, I felt myself really come to understand who Grace was, who Helen was, and who who Ruby was and and how they all fit together. I understood their dynamic and I, and I cared about them and even thinking about it now like I, I still I still feel that kind of care you get for a character when they're really well put together. Um, but where I feel like the story suffers a little bit is that sometimes the descriptions, most of the time the descriptions of like Chinatown in San Francisco or in parts when they're in Los Angeles or things like that, the sort of, the, the world doesn't seem quite so clear. And I think that's probably just a matter of personal taste. I like a lot of world building, a lot of descriptive imagery in fiction when I read it that comes out in my writing, uh, which I'm sure you know if you've ever seen any of the writing that I've put up on this channel. Um, but that being said, even though it doesn't quite fit into the same kind of thing that I like to read as far as imagery goes and things like that, it's really, really well done. So as far as my recommendation goes, I don't really have a point system seeing as this is my first review. Maybe, maybe I should have thought about that first, but I would give this maybe like a, like an eight out of 10, just, just to put it on a, on a simple scale like that. There are interesting characters. The time period is really, really interesting. If you're interested in in in, uh, in cultures other than your own, uh, assuming you're not Asian American or something like that, or even if you are and you want to sort of still maybe get inside someone's head who has had the same experience as you or may have, or you want to get inside the head of people who maybe come from a completely different background than you, I think it's really, really interesting. And um, you're gonna come away from this book really caring about these characters, I think so. Um, it has my recommendation. Of course, if you read this book, please let me know about it down in the comments below. Be sure to check out all our other videos here on the burrow, and I'll see you all very soon indeed. Go write something awesome. Hey Weasleys, this is Emily and welcome back to The Burrow. So Charlie and I both want to bring more book related videos to this channel so today I am starting with a book unhaul video. So I kind of have a little bit of a problem with buying books. I used to buy a 